Okay, so we're going to learn first about a, a critically vital skill for all web designers. You need to be very good with the inspect window. We've teased it out a little bit, inspect, uh, but now we're going to look closer at this uh, skill. If you need to be on Firefox or on Google Chrome to do this. They both have good inspect windows. Um, Microsoft Edge and Safari do have the capacity, but it's hidden by default. You have to like dig it out. So you cannot be using Safari. You cannot be using Microsoft Edge for this exercise. But let's go, go on over to gilmore.org. And here we are. So we're at gilmore.org. If you scroll down, you can see news. All right, so let's go to gilmore.org and scroll down to see the news. Kayla's already there. Anthony's already there. All right, good, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Zay is not there. Maura's not there. Maddie's not there. Gilmore.org, not the portal, the front page of the website. All right, so once we scroll down, we're going to see some of these news. And what I'd like you to do is right click and inspect. And you'll get one of these things. I don't like when it comes up on the side like this. I move, I go to the top right corner and I dock it to the bottom. And Chrome has the same options. It looks a little bit different, but I'm going to dock it to the bottom. So it's a little easier for me to see. I don't like how it squishes, especially since um, I've got a lot of, yeah, anyway, the wider screen is easier. All right, so now, as you can see in the inspect window, if I right click and press inspect on this text, I can see it down here. And you can double click here and you can edit this text. So, um, so junior selected for USA. Uh, um, how about if I inspected this and I said, and said junior selected for YAC, uh, junior saves the lives of, uh, 25 puppies. All right. And so now I have this, this is a, an interesting headline. I can now, uh, press, uh, command shift five on a Mac or, a Windows key shift S on a PC. I can take a screenshot of this and send this uh, fake news to, you know, spread it around the school. This is how you can start uh, rumors or all sorts of shenanigans. So uh, I did not change the website. I changed my copy of the website. Your website doesn't look like this, but you can edit this code. You can also, instead of say, read more, um, uh, I could inspect the button that says read more. I could double click and I could say uh, pay for his college. So now, uh, because of this news is so great, you can press this button and you can pay for his college. That's great. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk around the room and I want to see everyone having inspected one of these and changed the titles. Uh, I'd note that if you refresh it, it goes right back to the way it was because you didn't make any changes on gilmore.org. You only tinkered with the code that gets sent to you when you uh, send a get request to gilmore.org. All right, your next quiz is going to rely on this skill. You're going to have, the, the next quiz that you're going to get is going to, I'm going to hide the answers inside the inspect window. And so for, I might say, for example, if we scroll down a little bit, um, this is new color. All right, let's say where it says 15 average class size. What is the exact shade of this pinkish, pinkish uh, salmon, salmon red? Uh, who can get the exact tone of this? Um, and if you inspect it, you should be able to find uh, the container and I've found the background color. So I inspected it and I looked down and now I can uncheck that property and find the background color there. And so this shade of pink is, is this is the code for it. And I've just found that, that using the right click and inspect. So, 
So if you wanted to find out the exact shade of Gilmore Blue, this Gilmore Blue, then or or maybe this Gilmore Blue, you can inspect it and you can try to find that item, see what makes it the whole area glow. And so, wow, okay, it's gone. And then we can background color. That is the exact shade of Gilmore Blue. Oh yeah, you can totally change. If I said pink, um, and so now I can like, I can change the website too. Again, it's only my copy of it. I refresh it, I get back to the original, but that's that. Okay, that is what next quiz is going to look like. I'm going to hide the answers inside a button that you'll have to inspect. Um, and also, you're going to use the inspect window in our class today as we've replace colors on our existing website. Let's go over to that now. So let's uh, load up our replets and let's get ready to do that. We have our project here and now we are going to use uh, the inspect window. The inspect window in this form is really annoying. So what I would recommend is when we're uh, working on our websites as much as you can, keep it in a new tab and then just have this, have Replit showing your code, and then just flip over here to see a larger view of your website. I, that's better. Uh, at home, when I'm working on uh, websites for customers, I just have two screens uh, connected to my computer, one showing the website, one showing the code. That's the way to do it. Um, if you have just one screen, it's easier on uh, separate tabs rather than built in side by side um, on a laptop screen. Um, so, uh, now let's find out where this red, uh, button is coming from. What's making this thing go, uh, not red, I guess orange. So let's right click and inspect and let's find out where your CTA background color is coming from. So I can, I'm looking down. So I right clicked inspect and I'm making sure I you notice that it does say that I'm working on my primary button and I find out more. So I've selected the right thing and by selecting the thing in the DOM in my HTML, it loads the uh, CSS properties that are happening. So uh, we have two sides. Um, let's label these uh, quickly. Uh, what language is on the uh, left side? HTML, oh man, cool. HTML, and the language on the right side, CSS. And again, if you're keeping this on your side, then it's top is HTML, bottom is CSS. Um, but yeah, there you go. There is also, um, this slide, side note, if you click over to console, now you're talking in JavaScript. And so this is, this is pretty neat. But anyway, uh, I digress. Um, so CSS and HTML, uh, as long as I have the correct element element uh, selected in HTML, then it shows me that element's properties. And if I scroll down, I can see, boom, BTN primary, there it is. Now, if I wanna replace that, the, I want to change these rules. So I'm gonna right click and copy this rule. Uh, notice where I right clicked. I right clicked on a blank space inside this rule. So this rule has a boundary box and I selected some blank space inside of it and I right click and I copy the rule. In, uh, I'm using Firefox in Google Chrome. What's the option say? Just copy rule? Yeah. Oh, okay, it's, so it's the exact same, great. Copy rule. Now that I've done that, I go back to my custom CSS and I find a good paste, place to paste. So my hero makes sense because it's the hero button, but I also could put it into a section called uh, colors or a section called buttons because there are a few buttons. So you need to figure out the best place to paste this, but now you paste. I copied the rule, I got over here and paste. Now I can change my font, the background color and the border color. And what colors am I going to use? How, what, how do I figure out what codes to enter in here? 
da, da, scroll up. These are the colors I'm allowed to use. You can change this list if you would like, but heaven help you if you grab a color that's not on this list and use it down below. If you use a different color, if you say, hey, I click here, and you know what, I actually like this shade of purple or whatever, and uh, if yours adjusts the color, now it's showing that color code. If you like that, then you need to go back up and add it to your list. This is your master list. Only these colors are allowed to be used. Uh, you can modify this list, but this list must be accurate. If when I grade these projects, if I see you using a color like this one and is not found up here, uh, I will be taking off points because you're, you're just freewheeling color design. We're trying to stick to a pre-planned uh, pre pattern so that you can look at this color scheme and I should be, I'm gonna load your, uh, your coolers like this and I'm gonna take a look and then if your website doesn't look like this, uh, or at least like a lot of one color, that's fine. If it's not pulling from these colors, I will be salty. Okay, so uh, we are scrolling down and now we can change these colors. Uh, let's see, I would like, what is gonna be my primary color? I think I'm gonna really lean on this blue. I kinda like that blue, so yeah, okay. It might not have changed. Let's see, let's see if this is enough to fix things. Um, we may have a different problem here. We'll take a look. Uh, I've just changed the background color. And did that fix it for me? It did. Cool. But Zay is not satisfied because, look, if I hover over, it still goes back to that orange. All right. So here is where the next step. Now we take... I have to teach you one more skill about our inspect window and how to get that hover color fixed. Before I go there though, I'm just gonna quickly walk around the room and make sure no one has any trouble and then we'll go back and figure out how to do that hover skill. The next one is a little bit trickier, but it's once you have it, this is, uh, this is uh, a big one. And all it is, it, we're inspecting this button, but I want to know what it looks like when I hover over it. And these rules don't show me what happens when it's hovering, unless I should, notice there is a thing here that says HOV, HOV. So one, inspect your button, make sure you're selecting the right element. So in the tab, not that tab, don't inspect while you're in Replit because you'll get all of Replit's code too. It can get a uh, jungle. So I recommend only inspecting in a separate tab. What I mean by that is if I inspect here, I can see some of this code, but the whole file, it's, a, it's, it's vastly larger because th when you inspect, you're looking at the file that also has all of this information. It, it can be very complicated. It's easier instead to have it in a different tab, inspect this, and then hit the HOV option right here and activate hover. You'll, and you'll notice the color change. So watch, watch this as I activate the hover. You can see it, not only does it hover, but I can scroll down and I can find what happens when my button is uh, hovered on. Oh, it should be up, yeah. BTN primary colon hover. I press hover and then I had to check the hover box. So that it'll stay hovering and I can see this, um, this rule. Now I can right click and then copy this rule, come around and paste that in my CSS right underneath this. And now I've got the hover version. Now to be fair, all you can see, the only difference is this hover so you could, uh, you could totally, if you're having a hard time getting that inspect window, you could just copy this, paste it down here, hit colon hover, and then make these like slightly darker. So when you're hovering, it, uh, it looks a little bit darker. So that way, it's just a slightly darker shade. And now if I run this, when I hover over, it just goes darker. I don't like how 
that royal blue that I selected doesn't really work, but that's just a simple trick uh, how to do that. So I went to HOV, I clicked hover. It will only work if you've got the right element selected. And then once you do hover, you'll see the special rules uh, that handle uh, in the event of a hover. And now you can change that. This skill of inspecting, copying the rule and bringing that over is the entire essence of this entire class. This is what we'll be doing for the rest of the year, essentially. Uh, there's writing, there's graphic design, there's some other properties, but most of your styles and colors and adjustments will be inspect, find what's happening, and then bring that over to CSS, your custom CSS layer, and then fix it there. Um, okay, I'm gonna pause this again, and I'm gonna come around. Uh, Actually, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video because for the rest of the today, we're just going to be inspecting little things. Like I'll inspect this and I'll figure out why is this orange? And I'll find out, oh, text primary, that makes this thing, and I can toggle this uh, checkbox on and off. That's how I can figure out where this is color coming from. So once I find out where it's coming from, I can copy this rule and I can go and paste it here and now my color for my text, oh, if I have an important, then I need to leave that there because that means that rule is being shouted. So I have to shout back over that rule. But now I can make my text primary. I use the same, I use the same blue just to keep the pattern going and hashtag bup. So now I have just made these, this blue. And the same thing with this thing, this little line. If I inspect this horizontal line, this divider, I can see, okay, there it is rule. I don't care about the rest of this stuff. I'll copy the whole rule, but then once I bring it over here, I don't care about this, so I'm just gonna delete the stuff that I don't wanna overwrite. All that stuff that I just copied is, is in my styles. I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'll just take this color and put it on over here. And so now, I've got that blue done. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this background color. I'm going to continue the pattern. Uh, we'll do these, these are a little bit harder to fix. That's, I'll show you how to get to them later. Um, but the rest of the buttons, uh, background colors, even these links up top, I can inspect and find out where these links, uh, the color. If this white background, if I wanted to change this white background up top, is nav, I can find the nav, there's the background color, I can copy this rule, and I can bring it over here. I can say, okay, this background color, what if I wanted it to be my own shade of white that I have in my code? <coughs> and so now, now it's a different shade. Maybe I want it to be transparent, I could add in two numbers after, or I can just click here and say opacity um, down here. I can just lower this so it's mostly see-through. And I don't think that actually worked. Yeah. Uh, if I just add like a 70 at the end of that, that'll also work. So now it's see-through. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording here and I'm just gonna spend the rest of the class, we're just gonna edit the colors. If your colors are done, then you can start working on the actual text that we'll need. And then on class on Tuesday, we're going to work on editing the pictures in Photoshop and getting that in here. And that'll be a week long uh, effort.